Last time we were able to test if we can create a to-do, also if we can retrieve all to-dos, we also went ahead to test that a user should not be able to get to-dos when they are not authenticated. So in this one, we are gonna go ahead and add this for the other API views we have. So we wanna be able to test that we can view a to-do, we can be able to edit it, we can also be able to delete it. So what we are doing here is, we basically create a class that inherits from API test case, and then we go ahead to test the different views. So in here, we are testing that we should view all and also that we should create one. So basically we tested this here, right? So let's go ahead and test this. So over here, I'm just gonna create a new class. So I'm just have here a new class. So I'm gonna call it test to do. So let's, let's check the name of the view. So it's gonna be to do detail view. So we have to inherit from API test case because yes, we are testing APIs. So here, let's make sure this is formatted properly. So here we need to have three test functions. So we're gonna have tests retrieves one, text in self. We're also gonna have the other two to edit one and also to delete one. So I'm just gonna copy this and have a replicate it a bit, get it, make sure it's good. This should be updates, views, updates, then deletes. So if we run back our tests, we should get more tests added here. Now you see we have 14, but these are passing because we just have pass. I guess it just looked at us saying pass and then it passed. Uh, no guys, I'm just kidding. But let's go ahead and add something meaningful here. So to be able to test that we can retrieve it to do, we need to first have one to test with. So meaning we are going to need to have a setup that creates the to do that we are later going to try to view. So if we come over here and try to where we, right here where we, we created to do and try to find this, you notice that we have already written this in many times and we don't want to be repeating things that are the same. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to try to find this everywhere we're using it, everywhere. And then I'm gonna cut it out then I'm gonna replace it with a function called create to do. So I'm just gonna call it self.create to do. So then let's go ahead and create this. Now we have not cleaned out the sample to do. We will do that. So I'm going to come over here and also have it. So set def create to do. So what we'll have is basically a function that created to do. Now let's first find the sample to do and bring it in. So I'm gonna find everything and just cut them out. Make sure it's not repeated. Then we come over here and declare it. So this is gonna return the response. Now we need to be returning that response because I believe somewhere where we were using it. So over here, we can return response. So if we try to find where we're using create to do, it's that here, whenever we say create to do, it's gonna return us that response and we can work with it like this. So if you don't need to work with the response, no worries, we can just create like normal. Let's make sure it is still passing and it is still passing even when we refactor it out, which is good. Now, guys, that leaves us in another set of problem because right here, we are in another set of class and we can't usually go ahead and say self.create to do like we did in the other classes, no? What I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a class up here that's going to help us do the setup. So over here, I'm gonna have a class. So I'm gonna call it to do API test case. I'm actually gonna call it to do's because we're gonna use it in many places. And in this one, we can now go ahead and handle the create to do and things like authenticate. So I'm gonna cop copy authenticate and also create to do. Take it from this class over here and bring it to this one. So since this one already inhales from API test case, so it goes ahead to handle things like creating a to do and authenticating a user. And we would want to be using this in all the other classes that we might have to test. So what we'll do is we are going to make this one, instead of inheriting from API test case, to inherit from to do API test case. And that's gonna make sure that we can still access the create to do and also things like authenticate, okay? So now if we run back the tests, it should still work fine. And you said they are fine. And now this way, we can go, and now this way, we can go in our new test class and inherit from to do test case also and be able to do things like authenticating a user, we can do self.authenticate, and also we do things like create to do, and get the to do to, to test with. Okay, you see that? So this is gonna return us the response. Okay, so at this point, we can go ahead and create a to do like this. 
So now when we create a to-do, we can now try to make a call to go ahead and uh, fetch it from the view. We can do res equals self. Since we inherit from this, this also inherits from API test case. So we have access to the client. So we can do client. We want to do a get. Now, remember we use reverse to, to reverse the name so we can get the details of the URL. So this one is going to be called to do. Remember, so for us to be able to access this URL, we have to do something like to do slash one to do. I guess it's to do. Yeah, to do. Yeah, to do slash two. So now we need a way to pass a dynamic argument in this reverse so that the, the view can handle it correctly. Now, what you can do when you pass reverse, you can put a comma after you specify your, your name and then you specify keyword arguments. So you can say quags equals we need the ID. And then we can pass in the ID. Now, whenever we create a to do, it's going to give us that ID in the response. So over here, you can say response to data. Then the ID is what we are trying to view. So we expect this one to, of course, be there. So we can have an assertion to self dot assert. So we want to have so self dot let's first check the status code should be two hundred. So it's going to be status dot two hundred. Okay. Let's also check that the one that is sent to us is the one in the database. So I'm going to come over here and try to query the one in the DB. So I'm going to do so to do equals. So it's going to be, I'm going to try to find it by the ID that gets sent from the view. So now we can do to do dot objects get. So we get by ID. It's going to be, so whenever we create one, it sends us the, the ID of what was saved. So whenever we now make a request to the view like this, we want to make sure that the one that the view sent to us is the one that's in the DB. That way we can verify that our DB is really pers persisting things properly and our view is working properly. So here we can have self dot assert equal, I guess it's this. So we want to assert that to do dot title equals the title that is in the response. So we can do res.data title like this. So now we can run back our test. And you can see that it is still working. All these assertions are still working good. So let's go ahead and test. Let's go ahead and test update one. It should be really simple. So of course, there what we want to do is we want to go ahead and authenticate the user, create a to-do, try to edit that to-do from the view by making a patch request and then make sure that we update it in the db and we get a successful response so how do we do that definitely we want to authenticate want to create then we want to go ahead and try to edit it so here we can have we're gonna have another in fact let me remove this response the response assignment then i'm gonna have a response i'm gonna set it to self client let's make a patch request so when we do patch, we want to specify the URL. Now, since this is a dynamic one, we want to use a reverse and pass the keyword argument for the ID. So we want to patch this. Now, the next parameter you pass here is the new body. So we want to make sure that here, oh, we need the access to the ID. So let's have it because that. Then let's have this as res, make sure we don't confuse. So we need to pass a new one. So here, I'm just going to have a title. So I'm going to change the title from what was there to something like new one. Okay. I'm also going to go ahead and change is complete. So by the way, I'm also going to go ahead and change is complete. So is complete. Set that one to true. Okay. So now that we change this, we need to now make sure that the DB really updated. And the view re responded successfully. So let's have first let's first have the assertion for the view responding successfully. So assert equal. So it's gonna be rest.status code. We want to make sure that, that is a 200. So over here, whenever we make a request to create the to-do, we have the ID of what was created inside the inside the response. And we, we know that whenever we create at first, the default value for the is completed is complete is going to be false. So now that we change it to true, we can go ahead and assert that it really changed to true. So I'm going to go here and have another another assertion. So we're going to do self.assert. So over here, we can have a to-do, objects, gets. We want to get by the ID. 
then we're going to use response data the id we want to make sure that the, his complete value of this is true so we can come here and set this one to true like this and by the way i want to move this one away make it updated to do so let's declare it updated to do okay so we expect it to now be true because we have gone ahead to edit it even when it was false at the start we can also check the title because we changed it here. It should be new one. So we can say updated to do dot title should be new one. Right here, when we are querying, we need to say ID. We want to get for the ID of the to do we created here. So that's going to be response data ID. So let's try again. And now you can see that they pass. If we go ahead and change this, let's say we change this one to one one and run back again you see that now it fails because it updated correctly so this way if someone changes our code in one way or the other and something they never intended the test will catch it and they will have to come back and really check if they really meant to make the change that they had to that they had made if that's the case then of course they can go ahead and modify the test to perform okay and you are and your code review should be able to Check that and make sure, okay, this was the intended behavior. So that's good. Let's go ahead and add the one to test that we can delete an item. Basically, on this one, we want to be able to authenticate the user, create it to do, check that in the database we had a specific number of items, then go ahead and delete a to do and check that the number of items reduced. All right. So that's, that's how you would think about it. So let's go ahead and implement it. So we want to first authenticate. So authenticate. Then we create self dot create to do. Now let's check how many are there. So, so I'm gonna say prev db count. So then that's gonna be to do objects all count. So this is gonna represent how many are there in the db. Let's first make an assertion to make sure that they are greater than zero because this should create one. So we can have a self dot assert. In fact, you can say assert greater and make sure that the prev db count is greater than zero okay can even check make sure that it's one so assets equal one and now let's make a request to delete so you can say response equals self client we want to make a delete request we want to the url is dynamic so you know how we do that we pass the reverse with the quads so I'm gonna copy this, make sure we are passing that. And uh, we need the response, of course. So I'm gonna save the response we get when we create it in res. Then we can now use that. That's the one we are going to try to, to delete. So every time we delete successfully, we want to, we expect this one to return if, if a two or four. So we can have an assertion for that. So self.assert equal response status code. That's going to be status dot a 204. That's what our, our server returns. So we also want to make sure that at this point in time, the, the items in the DB reduced. So we're going to make a new, a new, a new query and assert that the items reduced. So over here, we can have an assertion. So serve dot assert. In fact, we can say assert equal. So we want to make sure that if we call this, it's going to return zero because we deleted it from the view okay so let's run the test again you can see that now they are still all passing and yeah so this means that our view is working and it's correctly interacting with the db so that's gonna do it for this one if you enjoyed it give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe i will talk to you in the next one